Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. You know sometimes it's uh, pretty tough to try to do more or less coherent videos about uh, comics when actually the stuff that I read is more like this here. A chaos of different genres, styles and, and, and topics and what have you. But for now, I just want to get this uh, out of my system here. So this video will be more a dump of uh, totally different material. And I hope you're interested nevertheless. Let's start with the floppies. Uh, I try to uh, decrease the number of uh, floppies on my pulls or comic books. But it's pretty hard when there's stuff uh, published like Rain Like Hammers from Brandon Graham, which is just... Fantastic. Um, if not someone else has told you before, this is just a great, great book with pretty unusual uh, storytelling. Uh, totally worth an, uh, another panelogy and it will be uh, on my channel for sure. Um, most probably uh, with Crimson Flower as well, uh, drawn by Lesniewski. Totally bought this for the art, which is fantastic. And I hope that Matt Kind uh, will deliver with the story and stick the landing after the fourth issue, I guess. So far, the story is okay, but the art is amazing. Um, yeah, We Live um, started with a fantastic designed issue here the, this is how i want to make my uh, make my flop piece to be made uh really nice uh started as an interesting science fiction with a surprise ending and i was not so fond of uh, the surprising ending like others because hey i wanted a science fiction story and what did i get in the end Let's wait. Spoilers. Deep, deep, deep. A superhero universe. A start for a new superhero uh, universe. Really, that's not what I have wanted. Anyhow, uh, another floppy series that didn't click with me as with others is American Ronin. Really, this series, I found this to be a bit too be generic, uh, too, too generic and blunt. Um, it went right in my into my eBay uh, stack. Um, next one here. This book I have uh, for a longer time, maybe some months, but I've been reading it recently and here and there. Uh, it's not not the stuff that you read from start to finish, I guess. Um, the beauty of these Joe books is that they reprint. Uh, the original comics with no recoloring so the, you get all the beauty of the Bendy dots coloring here um, in a slice, slight oversize. Time and time again when I'm a bit tired of reading I look in one or two art books like this Acme Novelty date book uh, of our guy Chris Ware here and these are fantastic made books from that dude there. Chris Ware is not really my favorite writer. I totally respect what he's doing um, and I like his stories, uh, but they're all so depressing and melancholic and uh, it's so foreseeable that a Chris Ware st story is just something to read when you're really in a good mood so that you're yeah <laughs> can um, enjoy it so here's uh, stuff that was um, recommended by John Angelo uh, for me I've read just a few pages so far uh, of the first volume and it wasn't more than enough to convince me that I have to get the whole series. This is the German edition from um, Reprodukt, uh, German uh, Berlin, Berlin based publisher. Um, but there are uh, English translations out there. So it's, um, as you can see, a cartoony Western, but it's more about getting the ladies into your bed, which is an interesting subject. Uh, I think so um, yeah 
Batman Black and White. I don't have to tell you something about this, I guess. Uh, a slight disappointment was this book, uh, Peter Cooper, or Cooper um, Kafkaesque. 14 stories uh, that have more or less uh, a Kafka vibe to them or are um, straight on uh, Kafka adaptations. The stories are just too short and you always get a glimpse of an idea and um, yeah, despite I, I have to admit this looks um, amazing on a flip through if you're into this kind of art. But yeah, there the stories are just too short to keep me really satis or to, to, to satisfy me. Um, but it's a very well made book. Dani Futuro, I uh, yeah, these are old books from the start of the eighties, um, but I pulled them out of my shelves because there are now new editions hardcovers from the German Alt Alt Verlag. Uh, so I wanted to yeah, reassess if they're worth of getting uh, upgraded. And the answer is yes or uh, and no at the same time because yeah, the stories with uh, uh, art from Carlos Jimenez are fantastic. They have this uh, Esteban Morotto vibe to them uh, that I really love, especially the ladies are yeah, have these uh, this seventies, eighties Esteban Marotto vibe to them, uh, which I really love. And sci-fi, two things totally up my alley. And when you blend them together, uh, it's actually a no-brainer. But no, because why should I upgrade them when I have already uh, these books here? See them here for not. Uh, Bought this for under a euro or maybe even a Deutsche Mark back in the day. So, um, yeah, but after volume three, I guess I own only the first three uh, volumes. I maybe uh, complete the series with the new hardcovers, which look pretty neat. Um, uh, Talking about neat hardcovers, this is from an old series from the German publisher Carlsen. Carlsen looks, they put out these uh, books here. They are still available all over uh, Germany and the cheap uh, comic bins. Just because I think the uh, print runs were very high and they couldn't sell uh, all these books back in the day. So they're still available uh, today, even though uh, the name Lux is no understatement uh, in terms of the production values and in terms of the content. I mean, Joost Zwarte is one of the mainstays in uh, European Linie Claire or the modern wane of Linie Claire. This book was published in 93. So, yeah, 28 years ago. But I got this... Um, this was a recent uh, addition to my collection. I have lots of these uh, Carlsen Lux um, volumes, but for whatever reason, I never picked up this Joost Zwarte book. I did this and I'm, yeah, you can see here where I am. Another of one of these books that you don't read from start to finish, even though it's a quite thin one, but it's something that you, yeah, like good wine. <laughs> you. You cherish it while you read it. So um, I've talked about Bella Zabotka in my best of ah oh yeah here it is in my best of 2020 video because it's really something special when a book from a German comic creator enters into my uh, top 10 lists of the year. Um, and I went a bit wild with his back catalog. Um, this is his um, best achievement so far, no doubt about it. But he did some other more mini comic formatted stuff before. Totally pulpy. Um, 
uh, very crude sometimes, but in a in a fantastic and fun way and um, very very intelligent trash. If <laughs> this is um, if this is something for you and you understand German, totally uh, look for stuff from Bela Zubotke. So. Yeah, talked about this stuff here uh, recently in the video, uh, the Turtles collection from IDW. It's really an amazing uh, yeah, series so far. So, and speaking of stuff that I've talked bef before, but forgot about a very important volume, obviously. Um, I recently did this um, video about uh, Gregor Rozinski and then in the comments uh, there was some hint that here he had done this other book um, with um, Monsieur Dufault and this is actually uh, yeah I've read just some uh, pages and thought hey this is something for a very special opportunity because it has uh, totally these Thorgal vibes but and the great Rosinski art, of course, and it's a lush volume, fantastic book, obviously. But I can't tell you so much about the story because, yeah, I still have to read it. It collects uh, one to four, uh, four albums of this series here that I've never heard of before uh, these comments. So thank you for. Um, recommending me this uh, stuff here. So, then totally, totally different stuff here. Jean Possellino, you know, I really like his uh, books and uh, it's, uh, it's just the stuff that it's not made for everybody and I totally get that uh, when you say that this is not good comics for you. Maybe, but still I would say, hey, give the man a chance um, because, yeah, of many reasons. It, these are time capsules, honest autobiographies. Um, more observations, not so much about events, just a little uh, slice, uh, slice of life uh, pieces that you can read almost like poems and really, um, yeah, just, just fun stuff. And uh, I'm thinking of some way to convey my fun with these books here. Uh, because it's so easy to dismiss um, these comics as yeah, just childish and, and stick figure cartooning. Um, but they are not. <laughs> they are really great literature. And on, on top of it, um, hey, come on, this new, these, this edition here that blends fantastically uh, with the older from Lone Mountain that I've shown you before in some video. This is really classy. Uh, made by Drawn and Quarterly, um, collecting, uh, if I hadn't said it, uh, the Kinkhead comics or um, special issues of or the best of King, Kinkhead comics. And here's Moam, uh, one of the volumes of uh, this older, but older um, anthology series from Fantagraphics. I got them all in the meantime and uh, read them so far that I'm up to this volume now and this is volume 7. So I still have a lot uh, to read until I'm finished, but this is a good thing because this series is really a neat mix of different intelligent and um, yeah, sometimes very weird out there and sometimes pretty clever cartooning. Again, something totally different is this year from 
the Library of American Comics, they have this line of special books called Essentials, in which they reprint uh, newspaper strips, uh, one year worth of comic strips in each book. They have Polly and the Pals and um, Crazy Cat and, and what have you. Um, and Dan Dunn here is not the best of them. It's just uh, the stuff that I've been reading right now. Pretty, yeah, uh, pretty basic uh, detective stories so far. But I'm very in the beginning here, and I think uh, the drawing style of Norman Marsh improved over the run of the story. And it is the same uh, detective story that Basil Wolverton made uh, fun of uh, later on with his um, detective series. So that was a bit of a point of interest for me and uh, that I got these books here for half price. Uh, and actually, to be honest with you, this was the reason to get these and try them out because uh, originally they clock in at uh, 30 euros, which is a bit steep, 30 um, dollars. So now to three different uh, classic European comics, um, Lindy Claire style, more or less. The most classy of them is no doubt about it, Maurice Tellieu. Um, he's the creator of Gilles Jordan. Uh, I guess that's the French original title. Uh, in, uh, in German, it's um, Jeff Jordan. Before he did a pretty similar comic around a character called Mark Jaguar. Um, yeah, very classic cartooning um, done in this fashion here. And so they republished uh, this two album series here and two hardcovers, which are, to be honest with you, a bit of a cash grab because they could have put easily uh, these two albums into one uh, edition, especially since the second album is for the most part done by other creators who finished uh, this, the story from Maurice Tellieu. Um, after his uh, car crash, he died much too soon. Another series that I really like is Ricochet's, uh, the um, collected edition in German. It's called, he's called Rick Master. A goody two shoes, true blue um, detective hero who has no problems to suck each villain real good and uh, the plots are <laughs> not always really fantastic. They, it's a bit like James Bond. Uh, when you have read one of these stories, you really see, um, you can foresee how the next uh, story will go. Um, but I don't have problems with that. I really have just fun with these pulpy adventures around this guy and, and his friends. Whenever I get the opportunity to pick up a new Love and Rockets book, new Love and Rockets book, I take it, even though in this uh, occasion here, it's just that I have now the hardcover. Uh, I have the soft cover as well before, but now I have the hardcover of this collection of weirder stuff here. Maybe not the a uh, place where you should start your ride with Love and Rockets, but for all Love and Rockets fans, it's uh, really a treat here. Um, I'm often asked, um, where should I start uh, with Love and Rockets? It's so intimidating, uh, the, the, the amount of comics that they have produced. And my answer is always the same. Uh, you can start everywhere, literally. Uh, Maybe with the exception of the more weirder stuff and especially some uh, comics from Gilbert are very disturbing and it's maybe not the best uh, thing to start with this stuff. But uh, for the rest of Love and Rockets universe, especially Jaime stuff, it's uh, just about being getting acquainted to the characters. So it's like meeting real people and you would not avoid in real life uh, to meet some people just because 
you don't know everything about their past, I think. So, um, it's not about uh, a series of events, so you can't be spoiled with Love and Rockets, basically. And now to the last three books. Oh no, uh, there's Natasha here, um, drawn by Voltari, and it's totally overdue to do a video about uh, this series here around or about the adventures of the stewardess. It's totally fun and, and real nice package in every way. Um, so, but now to the last three books here and they have, surprise, surprise, uh, a theme in common. And these, this is that they all take place in the medieval ages. Uh, Yen plays in the times of Jeanne d'Arc and is created or was created by Jacques Martin, a guy who is almost synonymous with a very conservative style of Lindy Claire, as you can see here. Um, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, um, but I really like it and uh, the stories are depicted here, cover pretty interesting part of uh, the French history. So I will speak about this series in, in the future and um, the second collected edition or Integral is on its way to me. The second title in that trilogy here about medieval times um, is actually playing in the times of the mythical King Arthur. It's written and drawn by François Krenhals. The German title is Roland Ritter Ungestüm. Um, collects three albums. As you can see, the French original title was, let's see, Chevalier Ardent. Come on, focus. Um, really nice art. Uh, I'm a bit suspecting that they've shrunken uh, these pages down to some extent because the publisher Crosscult has did this before. Shame on you with uh, even with Hellboy and especially with Hellboy. Uh, they shrunk down uh, the mini great Mignola art to mini comic sized books. It's almost mini comic sized. It's really a pain in the ass. Even though, what uh, what can you do in Germany when you don't have the opportunity to to put out huge editions? And maybe we should be glad that Hellboy is uh, even translated into German. I don't know, but I think they should have. Um, uh, done a bit better than that. So last but not least, Prince Valiant. And this is really uh, a surprise for me as well uh, that I now pick up Prince Valiant comics. It's a bit like uh, the Turtles. I wouldn't have predicted it uh, five years ago or so that I ever will read Prince Valiant because Prince Valiant or Prince Eisenherz, like uh, he's called in Germany, is yeah he's just old school comics and old fashioned and uh stuff that guys read that are older than me <laughs> so um but now as i'm pretty old myself i really love these editions here from fantagraphics even though they really um uh, yeah, weren't good for my purse because I went all in with the slipcase editions. Wait, maybe that's the last thing that I will show you today. Um, here we have one slipcase edition and there are two others. And Fantagraphics uh, republished them, I guess, uh, now in this fashion. And they're pretty neat. This Pretty neat stuff, I would say, and uh, of course I will show you in, uh, more of this stuff in the future. Prince Valiant is really uh, maybe one of the 
in one of the next videos. I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.